Welcome to the NPTEL online certification course, a course on digital control in SMPCs and FPGA based prototyping. I am Aditya Larakya from Texas Instruments. In module 9, digital control implementation using microcontrollers, today in lecture 88, we are going to study Texas Instruments C2000 key peripheral differentiations. So the concepts covered will be that why do you need a C2000 for digital power as well as control? What are the key peripheral differentiations offered by C2000 device? And lastly, we'll give a brief overview of what are the demonstration of example code using CCS IDE. So in the previous lecture, we went through the processing part, the processing capabilities of a C2000 real-time microcontrollers. In this lecture, we'll go through the sensing as well as the control part. Starting with one of the applications, that is an electric vehicle DC charging station power module, what it actually looks like is something like this where a three-phase AC grid voltage is connected to a AC-DC that is a power factor corrector unit which ultimately feeds its voltage into the DC-DC unit and lastly there is a vehicle which gets charged because of it. There is an isolation barrier in between as well. Now there are two real-time MCUs coming into picture over here. One is in the AC-DC stage, the second is in the DC-DC stage. The current market trend are highlighted in the bottom picture. So the first one that you see here is the higher power efficiency and power density. This is needed because it will minimize the unnecessary grid stress for mass development. As well as, if you have a higher power density, it will enable fast charging speed if you have the same size. Moreover, power efficiency will reduce the losses as well. Additionally, you need to have a bidirectional energy flow back to for, for, for the vehicle to grid charging. Lastly, we have modularization, modularization for cost efficiency and scalability, that is, for residential, commercial and industrial application will have its own different requirement. So that's why we need modularization. Now why C2000 for digital power control? So the first point is that for higher power efficiency and power density, we have high frequency PWMs which enable high switching frequency to control the gallium nitride as well as the silicon power devices. C2000 also enables complex power topologies and control schemes through large number of high resolution PWMs and high bandwidth sensing which enables ultra low latency control loop processing that is a very fast ADC as well as fast processing which ultimately will give you ultra low latency control loop. The platform is also scalable like you have an older version of device and if you want to port it to a newer one or if you want to play around with the device the platform is totally scalable where you can port the code from one device to the other with minimal or no changes. This unlocks the choice for power topologies as well as control schemes at all levels. So just to give a brief overview of what all TI designs are available for the power topologies for AC-DC as well as the power topologies for DC-DC stage, here is the picture. So in the AC-DC, that is the PFC plus rectifier stage, we have three-phase VNR rectifier PFC, we have three-phase two-level PFC, there is a TNPC PFC stage, an ANPC or NPC PFC stage, a totempole PFC stage, which we will discuss in the coming design as well, and a flying capacitor three-level. In the DC-DC power topologies, we have a dual active bridge, a CLLC dual active bridge, a conventional PSFB that is a conventional phase shifted full bridge, a two-phase interleaved LLC resonant converter, a flying capacitor full bridge and an interleaved series half bridge. These designs are provided free of cost on TI.com. You can quickly check out and jump start on your design development. The software is also available on TI.com, specifically in the digital power SDK as well as in the motor, motor control SDK. Next, the second application is the solar inverter with integrated energy storage system. So in this application, the solar arrays are connected to the DC-DC stage with, the, uh, with maximum power point tracking that is the MPPT which ultimately feeds into the DC-AC inverter stage. Also, we require an integrated energy storage system along with this. So we have a battery pack and for that we have a bidirectional DC-DC stage connected to the DC bus. So the market trend here looks something like this where hybrid inverter is there with integrated ESS that is energy storage system. This also requires a bidirectional energy flow. Same way as compared to the previous example, this also demands a high power efficiency and power density. 
Also, the distributed solar systems, that is basically our uh, rooftop solar systems, drives safety uh, requirements as well. So, the primary safety requirement is that if you have, uh, let's suppose, a fault, fault condition, so you, didn't, you need an immediate rapid shutdown. And in such scenarios where there, is a, uh, where there is a chance of physical damage to the system and there can be an arc introduced, we have a quick uh, requirement for the arc detection as well as sequencing. So, the arc protection is also a critical feature highlighted in the market trend. These all market trends are addressable by the C2000 devices. So, coming back again to the uh, device topologies that are provided for a DC-DC stage as well as the DC-AC stage, this will look pretty much the same thing because most of our topologies involve a bad action power flow. So, the DC-DC stage I have highlighted earlier as well, the dual active bridge, the CLLC dual active bridge and so on. And same way for the DC-AC stage, we have a three-phase Vienna PFC, a three-phase two-level PFC, a TNPC stage, ANPC stage, a totem pole PFC and a two-level edge bridge. TI also offers the industry's richest reference designs with C2000 controllers. All these reference designs are available with the C2000 digital power SDK, which you can quickly take a look at. Now, moving on to the server power trends. So, the market trends again over here demands higher power efficiency, the fast transient response, and higher power density as well. And higher power efficiency, the application benefits look something like this like it has lower operation cost. It specifically meets tightening efficiency standards, which you need to have more than 80. And since your efficiency will be higher, you will have a lower power loss. And that's why you will need a smaller heat sink and the fast transient response. So for that, you need uh, you, the application benefit will look like it will have a stable and robust operation under load as well as in input transients. Same way as compared to the higher power efficiency part, this also will meet the OEM's transient response spec. And lastly, the higher power density where we have a smaller form factor available with a lower system BOM. What are the overall design challenges if we talk about the market trends? So, the first design challenge that uh, comes up is the complex power topology along with a control algorithm. That is like we want to uh, uh, incorporate ZVS, ZCS, etc. So, for that, what are the key ingredients to make it happen within the C2000? So, we have the low latency ADC to CPU to PWM update. What I mean by this is that the sensing part is taken care by the ADC then the processing will be taken care inside the CPU, whereas the PWM will be updated. So this whole process is taken care at a very fast speed, which ultimately results in a very low latency. Then there is high PWM flexibility, resolution, and higher control loop speed and lower latency, which enables the overall design challenge of com complex power topology easily achievable. The second de design challenge is the real-time control performance for faster control loop execution. So for that, we have coprocessors along with the CPU which frees up the CPU bandwidth such as CLA, TMU, FPU, etc. And that's why the CPU will be able to give better performance. Lastly, we need to achieve higher switching frequency specifically for GAN and silicon, carb silicon carbide devices. So the C2000 devices has a capability to switch at a very high frequency and also it has a faster ADC with flexible start of conversion triggering that could be coupled with integrated internal analog comparators that is integrated internal CMPSS module. So now moving on to the some of the key peripheral differentiations that C2000 offers. I won't be touching upon all the peripherals in detail, but specifically talking about the sensing as well as the processing part, sensing as well as the control part, we have the EPWM, ADC as well as the CLB. That is the enhanced pulse width modulator module, the analog to digital converter as well as the configurable logic block. So starting with the EPWM module, that is the enhanced pulse width modulator module, we have the first on the top left that you see the high resolution on PWM output capability. This basically is a high resolution feature over the conventional PWM which adds specific use case when you are operating at a very higher frequency of more than 1000 kilohertz and so on. The specific details about when and where the high resolution can be utilized can be checked out in the specific device data sheet. This enables better performance for high frequency power conversions, achieves cleaner waveforms and it avoids limit cycle oscillations at the output. Then the second PWM feature that I would like to talk about is the comparator C and the comparator D module. So this CMP C and CMP D are basically some comparators which enables generation of ADC SOC event that is the start of conversion event as well as the interrupt generation event anywhere in the PWM period. Third point is the load on sync event. So the load on sync is basically that a CPU generates a sync event. Whenever a sync event is generated, we have a support for shadow to active load on a synchronous event. So you have a simultaneous register writes across multiple PWM modules. 
Yeah, uh, so this particular application can be utilized in variable frequency applications such as LLC control in power, uh, LLC control topologies, etc. Then there is action qualifier register where we have shadowing as well. So the action qualifier register is capable to cleanly disable and re-enable one PWM phase specifically needed to implement peak current mode control uh, applications. Then there is delayed trip functionality. So the delay trip functionality is basically that you have the capability to delay the trip event as and when needed. So this enables the ZVS operation which leads to higher efficiencies. Uh, the applications include the PSFD, PCMC, that is the peak current mode control, then transition mode PSC topologies, etc. The register reloads are also possible. Like if you want to only load registers from shadow to active in a single PWM module, you can use the one shot register reload. And if you want to operate at a global level, that is an all PWM module, that is also possible using the register reload option at a global level. This enables control of interleaved LLC topologies at higher frequencies. Lastly, that is a valley switching feature which has an ability to switch the PWM output exactly at the valley point or late as desired by the user. So this again enables improvement in the power factor, the total harmonic distortion and especially this is relevant in the power factor character applications, specifically at the light load efficiency conditions. Beyond these features, there are some additional features as well. Since PWM is a very critical IP, it is very well connected with other on-chip IPs such as the CLB, that is the configurable logic block, the crossbars, ADC, etc. There are also features like cycle by cycle trip for current limiting operation and one shot trip functionality for fault detection purposes. Then there is support for adjusting duty cycle to handle inrush current for transformers and choppy duty cycle for pulse transformers using PWM chopper submodule. All these features that are discussed for that, the demo examples are available to configure each feature set available that is in C2000Ware uh, driver lib device and examples folder and moreover you can check out digital power SDK as well as motor control SDK. Now specifically talking about high resolution module, so high resolution basically is a module which enables you to improve application performance, eliminate limit cycle oscillations and it operates the system at a very high frequency and reduce the passive component sizes. It has the capability to provide the, uh, to place the PWM edge transition at a time step of as minute as 150 picoseconds. Now, typically this use case is used at uh, PWM duty cycle. So if you want to have a very specific duty cycle, that's where HR PWM can come in place. If you want to have a very specific PWM period or a PWM phase where you are operating at a multi-phase, multi-PWM phase level, or you want a very specific dead band, which, uh, which will be ultimately used in minimi minimizing shoot through, that's when the high resolution feature, feature will be used. Just take care that this is uh, this resolution is provided up to as much as as low as 150 picoseconds. Then we come down to the ADC that is the analog digital comparator. So TIE C2000 ADC is a SAR type that is a successive approximation type ADC. There are 12 to 16 bit selectable resolution, a single ended or differential ended uh, differential uh, sing signal conversion. A signal uh, single ended is uh, compatible with both. 12 bit as well as 16 bit resolution, whereas the differential signal conversion is compatible only with the 16 bit resolution mode. We have input multiplexer with up to 16 channels per ADC module, and for each 16 channels, we have 16 configurable SOCs as well. Again, for each 16 SOCs, we have configurable addressable registers as well. There is an option to select whether you want to go for internal reference voltage or you want to use an external reference voltage. The internal reference voltage can also be used within the chip. Multiple SOC triggers, that is the start of conversion triggers for the ADC are possible in this. That is, you can use either software, all the PWMs are capable to trigger the ADC. You can even use the external triggers to uh, trigger the ADC. ADC also has good connectivity with the peripheral interrupt expander block, that is the PIE block, which is the interrupt block, and uh, you can generate interrupts using this PIE block uh, on ADC event, on specific ADC events. Then there are four post-processing blocks as well, which we call as PPB block. These are hardware blocks to reduce the software overhead. The use case of this PPB block is that it is capable to have an offset calibration, error correction, the trigger to sample delay capture. It can even detect high, low, zero crossing comparison, and it can also generate interrupt for EPWM trip in such cases where you want to have a zero crossing or a high low comparison. Lastly, this ADC also has an open shot detect feature where you can even detect whether the pin that you have connected for ADC configuration is open or short to some other external source. Specifically, if talking about data speed, this 12-bit ADC for an F2838X device is somewhere around 3.5 million samples per second. 
and the conversion speed somewhere around comes somewhere around 250 nanoseconds now this value will vary device to device and all the device specific information can be captured in the device data sheet now coming on to the third part that is the clb part so there is a customizable logic block that is available which we call as configurable logic block this customized logic is usually done in our system by adding fpgas or clpd or some external logic but these systems most always still include a traditional microcontroller as well that is the image that you see here on the left hand side the c2000 microcontroller unit configurable logic block enables customization on a microcontroller based real time control system while eliminating so now you don't need uh, an external fpg or an external clpd cpld for this purpose but in case of any minor logic that you want to implement that you can implement using the clb block available within the c2000 device so you eliminate the size you uh, reduce the size of your whole device by eliminating fpga and clbd so uh, taken a sample use case of tms 320f 28004x we have four configurable logic block as highlighted in this image now this configurable logic block gives the ability to build logic around and augment existing on chip peripherals like gpio epwm eqep that is the quadrature encoder pulse the capture pulse etc all these peripherals specifically pwm capture qep can be connected to different clb tiles using something called as a clb crossbar this crossbar is capable to connect all these ips to the clb now the user can implement its own custom independent logic similar to fpga and do whatever operations he wants and based on the decisions he wants to take you can have then intersect or override peripheral outputs to the uh, epwm qep and ecap as well as if you want to give the output back to the gpio that is also possible using the output crossbar now we would like to show a small demonstration of how a ccs or a c2000 where environment is utilized i will particularly show an adc epwm example okay so uh, we start the demonstration and for that uh, you open the ccs window that is the code composer studio window you can go to the project menu click on import ccs project click on browse and this will lead you to the latest version of c2000 where that you have installed click on driver lib click on the device that you have connected click on examples and select the example that you want to run in this case i want to run an adc example so i have selected adc and select adc folder i will run adc soc epwm example that is example number 2 click on the example and click on finish this will import the example into your ccs environment you can open this example by clicking on the drop down symbol available here there are two main files available one is the main file that is the source file and the second one is the sysconfig file the main file contains all the initialization configuration whereas the sysconfig file is basically a gui where you can do all the initialization file initialization configurations so first of all i'll open the sysconfig file where all the initialization is done so you can see here the adc is already enabled with the sys control as well you can see all the basic analog, uh, adc configurations done over here such as the pre scaler if you want to go for the high priority mode then you can enable that as well all the start of conversions can be enabled over here in this particular example we have enabled the soc uh, number 0 enabled so specifically for soc 0 all the configurations can be done inside the soc 0 tab that is its name can be changed which channel it is configured to you can uh, select all the channels that is uh, from 0 to 15 that is 16 channels so in this particular case we have selected adc in 0 for conversion lastly we'll have the trigger configuration that also can be enabled so in this particular case our trigger is epwm1 adc soc a once you are done with the configuration you can save this file and close it in the main coming to the main file we have the initial introduction for the example then there are some initialization parts that are done they are, they are the device initialization then there is one file one uh, function called as board underscore init function so this particular function has all the files that are developed using the sysconfig file then we move on to the init pwm function which sets up the pwm for this particular example coming down we have the init pwm function where we have all the adc configurations done for the epwm lastly we have the adc a1 isr where we read the results so we have a 256 a size buffer where we'll read the results for the adc conversions the first step once we are done for the configuration is to build the code so for that i'll click on the symbol and build the code make sure that you have selected appropriate build configuration so in my case i have a uh, 
TMS 320F 280049C launchpad connected to my device. So based on that, the active configuration to be selected will be CPU1 launch Excel RAM. And for that, the target configuration to be selected is TMS 320F 280049C underscore launchpad.ccxml. The simple target configuration without the launchpad tag is for the control card hardware. Once you are done building with the example code, once the build finish shows up, you are now ready to debug the code on the hardware. But in case uh, this example would have any error, it would have shown under the problems tab. Since this example is clean, I will now go ahead and debug the code. So once we have the code debugged on the hardware, what you can do is that we have the ADC A result, ADC 0 result, this variable is actually holding, is going to hold all the results for our ADC. So I will add this particular uh, variable to my watch expressions. So I can right click on that, select add watch expressions and click on OK. This will add my ADC result 0 variable into the expressions window. I can now run the code to see whether I am getting my desired results or not. So since I have connected a 3.3 volt source to my ADC input, that is at channel ADC A0, I am getting 4096 for the 12 bit ADC configuration. That's all I wanted to cover for this demonstration. So as a part of the conclusion, in this lecture, we studied the current market trends for EV, solar, as well as the server power applications. Also, we went through some of the key peripheral differentiations offered by C2000, that is an EPWM, ADC, as well as CLB. And lastly, we also went through the getting started using C2000 ecosystem, that is in CCS and C2000 way. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.